nowhere. Then there's no. I'm looking at you, John. I'm gonna hear the name and I'm gonna get PTSD. But the cream runs to the top. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, but uh, I I draw a parallel with Henrik Lundqvist to a man who was also the epitome of class, dominance, and consistency in his sport, and that's legendary Mariano Rivera, the great Yankees closer, probably the greatest relief pitcher in the history of baseball. Um. Every time that you were out there, that you, you the Yankees had the lead, you knew that Mariano Rivera, the minute that Enter Sandman came on, that game was done. And opposing batters were probably soiling themselves when they heard that music. Because even though they knew that there was one pitch that they were going to get, odds are they weren't hitting it. That bat was going to be splintered. They were going to foul pitches off until eventually he got his way and asserted his will and either struck them out or forced them to ground out, maybe even a pop out. While Mariano was not perfect, nobody ever is, neither was Henrik Lundqvist. But we're going to see in the years going forward that Henrik Lundqvist was exactly what Mariano Rivera was to the New York Yankees for the New York Rangers. I mean, I I, I mess around with the, with the John Butcher Gross um, analogies that he would use. He used to make on NHL tonight where he, he dropped the, uh, the musical references. What Eddie Van Halen is to Van Halen. Henrik Lundqvist is to the New York Rangers, something like that, you know, and Henrik was that he was, he was dominant he was consistent. He was he was a surefire thing. If you had Henrik Lundqvist in net going into a Game 7, you knew that you had arguably the greatest Game 7 goaltender in the history of the NHL. You want to argue Patrick Waugh? Okay, fine, understandable. But if you've taken one look at Henrik Lundqvist's Game 7 stats or stats where he's in games facing elimination, ask the Washington Capitals about that. Ask the Pittsburgh Penguins about that. I mean, he, he, he this, this guy, this guy was traumatizing the the Capitals uh, and Penguins and and their fans, just because he he was in their heads. He was stopping them. He was a brick wall. And we love Igor Shosturkin. We love what he we think he can be, but he most likely will not be a Henrik Lundqvist. Just like when Rafael Soriano took over for Mariano Rivera, this is Igor Shosturkin taking over for Henrik Lundqvist. And there's a lot of pressure to put on Igor Shosturkin being the guy that fills in the shoes of the greatest goaltender in Rangers history. So when somebody had to answer that call and get in that net and play that elimination game, you felt confident. I was there for game six against Montreal in 2014. Tell you right now, I felt confident. But when Kovalov stood up and ripped off that jacket, that building shook when he showed that 94 final shirt. I'm still getting chills right now talking about that. I am still getting chills. And the goal was scored after Henrik made the save. When he made that save, I knew we weren't losing that game. And there might not be another one ever like Henrik Lundqvist ever again. So we were spoiled with the best Rangers goaltender of all time. And I I think there are a lot of Ranger fans out there who have a lot of bad things to say about him. Certain sect of Ranger fans, for whatever reason, have the worst things in the world to say about this man. And he did not make this team to this short of a cup. So good luck with Igor Shosturkin. Because, honestly, I I love Igor. I love the potential. But we better hope that there's a team in front of him. Because we've seen what happens when you have an elite goaltender and you don't put the proper team in front of him. You fall short. I think about Henry Glundquist. I think about a lot of the things Mariano was. Your your comparison, Mariano, is pretty good. Um, Yes, Mariano is... 
Um, I can use the word arguably because it is up for debate, but for my money, he's the greatest uh, closer of all time. Um, Henrik had a uh, just under a two goals against in game sevens. If my life was on the line, I trust him with a game seven. <laughs> and um, the I, I want to trust the Rangers' offense. That's a different story. Any pick a pick a year, but it's just. Basically, you gave him one goal, and that's the funny thing about that. I I, I still think that win against Montreal, the one you're talking about, that game felt like it was 10 nothing to me. I was not scared for one moment. And I know that there I, – I completely forgot there was a post-it in the third period, but it's – Henrik wasn't letting in a goal, and he was at his best after he was at his worst. When he got pulled, his goals against is microscopic. So, um, but also 13 consecutive years of 20 wins or more, 13, that's a minimum of 260 wins. And that's his first 13 seasons. He wasn't bad to start and then got good. I mean, he was just like Mike Richter. He came in good. So, and again, like we said in our first segment, he conducted himself much like Mariano. Mariano was, was epitome of class. I mean, Mariano was closer to Brian Leach because he was more um, uh, under the radar and and low key. Uh, Henrik was closer to Derek Jeter, but it was, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, obviously Sandman because he has the championships to to back it all up. So you're right about that. He's the greatest at his position, but yeah, Anthony. I mean, it, to, to, long, I don't know what else I can say. Um, Longquist, uh, he was like, he was, he made the Rangers go. I mean, for a while there, they had some teams that were good but weren't great, and he brought them to a level where any other goaltender probably couldn't. To be honest with you, like the other made the Stanley Cup Finals, um, 2015. I thought Longquist was was phenomenal for them both years. That was the thing. He like you compare him to Richter. Yeah, Richter got a cup, but you know he played in front of a better, better defenses. Lundqvist didn't have that luxury, um, and he was still an elite goalie. So, you know, again, there's nothing else I could say about Lundqvist. You know, he's he was everything to the Rangers. He was he's elite. He'll go down as one of the best. Um, and as an Islander fan, you you know couldn't really couldn't really hate him because he was just a guy that you, you, you can't hate. And then plus like later on in his career, like even not even later, the Islanders fared pretty well against him. So I think that took away the, it took away the level of ever hating Henrik Lundqvist, but um, f- phenomenal goalie. Also, by the way, think about it like this, name three of the best players you could think of over the last 15 years. And I'm going to go with 15 city Crosby. Alexander Ovechkin, Evgeny Malkin. He saw those guys every single year. And think about how much more winning uh, Ovechkin could have done if he could have gotten by Lundqvist. They, Barry Trotz even said it. You have, have a feeling that we're going to have to go through New York, and then the Rangers uh, didn't make the playoffs in 2018. Because that's just how, how it was working. And um, I mean – if if we're lucky, so Sturkin is half as good as Lundqvist. Yeah, and you. Just because there are so many factors that get in there when people don't get to the ultimate prize, and people want to say, "Oh, he didn't win a championship." Ted Williams is less of a great player. Dan Marino is less of a great player. I was just gonna say Marino, but Ted Williams is a really good one too. Ted I mean, Williams might even be a better example than Marino. Right. I mean. And, and sometimes these guys will their, their teams on there. It's so difficult. And trust me, if the Rangers could have showed up in either game five or game seven versus Tampa Bay, uh, we're having a different conversation. If the Rangers d- didn't lose Matt Zuccarello in the first round that year, we're having a different conversation. Uh, you know what, if, if they, if they, if they called it goalie interference, we're having a different conversation. The, the game three overtime wrister from Kucherov. I mean, if if that shot doesn't go in, you know that that that's a that's a two one series heading into to game four for the Rangers, and they won game four, decidedly. 
Yeah. You forget how good he was in that series because he was bad in two and three. He, I mean, yeah, he, that, I mean, that's the only time where I could ever say that Henrik Lundqvist was himself. There, there's two series that I, I look at and I, I say it wasn't, it wasn't himself. It was the Tampa series, and Tampa actually had his number if you look at his regular season numbers against them that year, and then the Ottawa series in 2007. But considering all the other times that he dragged their asses there, like, I, I'm, I, you, what are you going to say? What are you going to say? You, you're going to blame Henrik for that? No. I I mean, like I said, he wasn't himself, but no Lundqu- I mean, uh, no McDonough or McDonough on a broken foot and no Zuccarello. And if you have those two healthy, that's a different series. And uh, just to address this, Justin, blew too many leads. Uh, yeah. J- John's talking about the Ottawa series. Let's go with the Ottawa series for a minute. First off, you know who blew those leads? Elaine Vigneault. You can't put Harry McDonough on for two minutes and 30 seconds. You can't sit Brady Shea in a two-goal game forever. Henry Glundquist in game five, I believe it was, literally dove across the ice, throwing his hands up just to, just to stop him, uh, just to stop a shot. And he, and he stopped it. Great save. Highlight real save. And then you wonder why he's exhausted and uh, Derek Broussard ends up tying the game. And, and, and Girardi walks. Girardi, right Jan Girardi. Yeah, Jan, Jan Girardi getting walked in overtime, falling down by Kyle Turris. I mean, like, th- that's the thing. I mean, Girardi fell again against Justin Williams in game one of the of the, the Stanley Cup Finals in 2014. I mean, again, another one. If you have Michael Sauer, AZ brings up a good point. If they have Michael yeah. Sauer in, in 2012, you're, you're looking at Stu Bickle not playing at all instead of playing a minute and a half per game. And you're looking at a solid defenseman that that's in oh. your, yeah. Oh, by the way, sorry, Justin, I didn't see the other one. <laughs> not Henry. No, no, it, it, it's it's it, it, it's not his fault. I mean, he wasn't himself, but his team, the team, didn't help him out. But again, uh, if you want to go back to the Mariano moment, him catching that puck with his armpit is still one of the greatest saves I've ever seen. He didn't have a stick, and he and he made that save on Paul Martin. That was just amazing. By the way, AZ, uh, you're supposed to message me. You were uh, either on Twitter or Instagram, but I never heard from you. Um, so, by the way, guys, what do you think? Is it a fair comparison to put Henry Conquist, Marion Rivera? Uh, put it all down in the comments below. Also, obviously, like, share, subscribe. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.